so six o'clock arrives and 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 what happens six a.m it's time for you to go yes mm -hmm. it's time for us to go the whole day is actually pretty quiet it was really quiet and we knew we've hit the jackpot here today mm -hmm. we are not going to fire any rounds we're going to end up going back to the base safe and sound it's 6 p.m you've hit the jackpot you're on your way back to base before that that's when everything hell broke loose because that's when we were attacked under heavy fire from the taliban mm -hmm. and there was chaos everywhere it was absolutely hot for almost like two hours until when we received uh, American air support that came and helped us to try and calm the situation, to try and divert the Taliban's attention mm. so that we could find a way of extracting that position. And you said, how long did this last? Two hours. So it's now headed to 8 p.m. Yeah. and you're still fighting. Mm -hmm. What goes through your mind at this point? God, please save me. Yeah. That's what's just going through my mind. Yeah. Please save me and don't let anything happen to me. Mm. Because remember that time my daughter was very young. So you had a daughter at the time? Yes. How old was she? She was four months. Wow. And was this your first child, your only child? Yes. Oh, so you've got a four-month-old waiting for you back mm -hmm. at home in a, in a young family. Yeah. And you're praying, God save me. God save me. How much of that can you describe? of that situation, of being under fire, of what is that like? It's horrible. It's a horrible situation because at the same time you need to be calm because if you're not calm, you won't be doing your drills correctly. Yeah. And when I mean by drills, this is when you're trying to fire your own weapon. You won't do them correctly. Mm. There's panicking. You need to be calm at the same time. And so many things are going through your head. You know, you're trying to protect yourself and trying to protect your brother who's next to you. Yeah. Yeah. So the Americans arrive. Mm -hmm. And what happens next? The next minute, my boss tells us we need to extract the position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And by extract, you mean leave? Yes. Okay. So as we were leaving, um, I happened to drive over an IED. Mm -hmm. But I can't remember anything after that. Did you? How did you know that you drove over the ID? Did when you? I said when I I had a loud bang, yes, and all I could see was white. What happens next? I find myself in hospital in the UK. Did you lose part of your team? Um, we lost some members. Yes. Mm. You're very very well trained. But is there any amount of training that can prepare you? for the loss of a colleague and a friend? No. I don't believe there's anything like that. I don't believe there's anything that can train you for a loss of a friend or a colleague or a brother or a sister. So you find yourself in a hospital in the UK and what's the first thing that you realize? I realize that my body can't move. I've got pains everywhere on my body. My leg is paining, my back is paining. I remember at one point I wanted to go to the toilet and the nurse told me we've been advised that you're not supposed to move. I had um, I fractured eight lower, eight vertebrae on my lower lumbar spine and then on the left side, my leg, I couldn't feel my leg. How long were you in hospital for? Uh, I can't actually remember how long I was there for, but it was quite some time. Days, weeks, months? No, it was, I think I was in hospital for about two months active football player running around chasing a ball to deployment to lying on your back for months i just couldn't believe that everything can change in a flash so after two months were you better able to come out uh yes so i was put under rehabilitation for one year and this is something very surprising that even when i completed the rehab under one year i was still going through under pains but I didn't want to tell anyone. Mirrors. Yes. <laughs> because I was still hustling. Stoic. <laughs> yeah, I was still hustling. You know, I was trying to be the hard one, yeah. but my body was catching up. Yeah. So I started having surgeries after surgeries, 
nerve damage and this was a result of my accident mm. so it got to a point where they told me you know what david we can't help you further than this talk a little bit about the hustle while in pain when you look back at at, at that younger dave and the need to you know be strong stay strong be tough what would you say now to him if you had the opportunity to? I would have said to him that he was stupid. Yeah. Okay. In the sense of when you're being told something by a doctor and you think that they're telling you something which is not right and you end up doing something, overdoing what they're telling you, yeah. you end up making your situation worse. I would have tried to save my leg a bit longer compared to the way I was trying to rush and do things. And they were just catching up slowly by slowly, day by day, you know. And that's where they always say patience pays. You had a six, you had six years yes. of surgery. After surgery, nerve surgery, nerve specialists. I think any specialist that would work with nerves or anything to do with the damage that worked on me. Yeah. But they couldn't find a solution. What would you say to people who are going through something right now? The most important thing that I've realized through my own experience is God has, God has a plan for everyone. You might think that the situation that you're in is worse. There's someone else somewhere who's going 10 times tough than what you might be thinking you're going through. But what makes you, what makes an individual stand out is you accepting the situation as well. That's something very important. That's something that any bad situation that happens to you, accepting is the most important thing that you can do for yourself, for you to try and improve yourself and live your life in a positive way. It's sad that I lost my leg, but I was asking myself, I'm still breathing. Yeah. And that's the most important thing that we can do. So how do I change my life from having two legs to one leg and living that life in a positive way? Mm. That is what was going through my head. What would you have loved that your family and friends would have visited and said to you that would have made the difference? Keep reassuring the people who are going through tough times. But at the same time, tell them about the reality of life. People will go through rough patches in life, but you also need to look at two sides of the coin. I can come and reassure you as much as I want, but if you don't want it within yourself, there's nothing that's going to happen. No matter who comes and speaks to you, nothing will ever happen. So that's why I keep on emphasizing about accepting the situation. This is within you as an individual. As long as you've got a positive mind and a positive attitude, you will get somewhere. Was there one thing that just snapped you out of it so that you would never go back to being that person? Yes. I actually tried to commit suicide twice myself. And this is something when I, I'm sharing my story now after all that time, people don't know. What made me take a turnaround was my daughter. Mm. I think she played a huge part for me to be where I am today. Because when she told me that she loves me, even despite when I have one leg, that just made me realize, you know what, that definitely lifts you up. Mm. And my life just changed from there. And I said, if she can see me, if she can see me as the dad, and she knows that I'm missing a leg, but she can still see me as the dad that she knew before with two legs, what's going to stop me from being positive? Mm. What's going to stop me from me every waking up every day and seeing my daughter grow? What motivates you, motivator of other people? The messages that I receive every day. Mm -hmm. The positive messages that I receive. The stories that people share with me. How I've changed their lives. And this is something that I would say, do something positive. Do something that some, someone will look at you and say, you know what? Because of so and so's actions, they made me a better person. And there's nothing, there's no better feeling than that. If 
someone's watching this video, the one thing that you want them to go away with? One thing that I would say is any bad situation that you find yourself in, accept that situation. Look at that situation in a way that you'd build yourself to be a better person tomorrow. We tend to do things in life where we've got our kids watching us, our nieces watching us, our nephews watching us. What would you want to leave behind when you're not in this earth anymore? It's the good memories. And the good memories that you portray out there is what, what you are trying to do to make someone be a better person tomorrow. Accept your situation and ask yourself, what would you like to leave behind that people would say about you? David Atale, thank you so much for coming into studio today. Thank you for having me, Capital FM. It's been, a, it's been an amazing experience for me as well to get this invite to come here and share my story. And I hope that the people who are watching this video, that they have learned something mm. that would make them be better people tomorrow and they would pass it on to the next generation who are coming up. Mm. And thank you for watching. My name is Renee Cabal, and this has been Focus with Renee.